Kalacho. By your sweetest princess Zilka. smooth you're wise and full of intellect energy powerful energy sweet princess Zilka. i continue juan pablo fell in love with me i just heard on day one makes sense because i remember him how often did i met people as i arrived in mexico i barely have any memory about anything but that was a memorable moment i have it like a picture in my head I was sitting in Oscar's house apartment in the Pedregal Dos. He lived with his parents. I was sitting on the couch on one end of the living room, large living dining room area. I never got to see the kitchen. I never ate at their house. Modern. Yeah, it's not that fancy, but yes, for Mexico, it's a status to live there. And because nothing around. Yes, there is. Let me not talk about that. Let me continue. Who lives around the corner? René Cardona, the movie maker, where I sang at his funeral, yes. The feng shui analysis I intended to do at his house after he passed for Pilar, his second wife, the Peruvian, pretty model. You're not that pretty, but yes, you're okay. She was okay. He lived right behind. Yeah, well, that was years later that I met him. I don't went very often to Oscar's house, but well, that was the first time many people were present and I was sitting on the couch next to Pakuko and he came with his wife. I was introduced to the family as the cousins from Oscar. He said hi, they said hi, and then they left, I think. But I remember that very moment when he said hi and I remember him. I don't remember her. So he fell in love and that is the issue to guys, my people. In a certain vibration and love, you can pick up what God tells you. You might not understand it intellectually, or maybe you do. Because then God can explain to you stuff you should be doing and will be helping you to do that. To forward your very own path. Just like Yaiki. When I met Yaiki in Cuernavaca. Yeah, the day he was there, the next day for dinner and the following, he called me as he was exiting to San Francisco. For the next few days, he wrote to me like every day, an email. And it was so impressive that when I arrived to SF, I asked him to write me some more because he seemed like unsatisfied with his life. I thought the literacy about it, the genius about these, these emails were like impressive. Dude, such a writer, can you write? And he looked at me like he didn't know what I was talking about. Like he never wrote those emails. He was God guided to write it so I would feel attracted to him because it showed something which made click in me. No, it never happened after that. One day, Sophia walked into my bedroom with a theatrical act which he never did before nor after. Absolutely out of the blue with a weird accent and a strange body posture, walked in and said, Hello, I am Aunt Earl. How old was she, nine or eleven? I laughed my ass off. It was hilarious. How did she come up with that? Why? It was so out of the blue, but I'm always looking. Remember, I always felt it. Your children can be messengers of God. They don't know exactly what they give out, but they can give out messages because they are pure and clean. So I thought that was a message. Something she was incited to do. I have no clue what it was. It had nothing to do with her personal. Nothing. She didn't, she didn't have ego, but she wanted to like shine. Look at me, look at me. She was already an accomplished artist. 
Well, that's what I say. You might object and say that wasn't me again putting that into her. And that she did because then she stopped doing art. Where an artist never can stop. She had the time. She had all the material. I was getting her more and more. I was intending to encourage her because she was so good at that. And she stopped. I have no clue what that was. But that Aunt Earl thing, to the day, I don't, I don't understand what it is. To the day, I don't get the message. I don't know what the, what message that might have been, if there was any. But I remember the incident. It was amazing. And of course, I let her know. I laughed. Of course, I let her know. In the vibration of love, you can receive the messages of God, and they can tell you stuff. So Juan Pablo received that message too, and that's what he did. He fought the bitches. Because when you're not Catholic, you don't give a shit about your reputation, remember? <laughs> it doesn't matter if people think that he is this or he's that. Precisely. Even more so. The scandal of the family. Yeah, who gives up? That's what he said, because his intellect and his sensitivity was more important and more relevant than giving in to a bitch or a lifestyle which was his, but not in bitch land, in fine and elegant land. Lalo, for example. Yeah, Lalo was my mechanic and he also became a friend. But of course, he was aiming to get more. Why? How could he possibly fathom that? I never thought about it, or maybe I did. Because he was accomplished within himself. He had his job, he had his employment, now he had a company. He had his own little business, and he was good at what he was doing, and he was honest and sincere. Yet what else was there? He told me that he was one out of 10 children. Somewhere in the middle, and somewhere in the middle, a little older, was his sister, Abigail. Among other people, we went to see Abigail once. She was living with her husband, Ernesto, who was much older than she was, but she looked young, who was ugly and she was very pretty. But she wasn't model pretty, she was a different type of pretty. And they had maybe two children. And she made me croissant with ham and cheese in the microwave so the cheese would melt over the ham and the croissant. And that was an evening snack or dinner. That was so cool, I remember it. And she was also not only the most prettiest girl from the entire 10, the entire family. She also was the only one who was very, very intellectual. Intel not very intellectual. She was intelligent. I don't know if she was intellectual. Because I barely saw her and she had children. So she wasn't working on any intellectuality at the time. And I thought, or maybe they're sad, or maybe both. Well, she's smart. She got herself an, a husband who might be ugly. Not that not like cock ugly. Not that ugly. In comparison to her though. He might be ugly, but he's devoted to her. And isn't that what every woman wants? A devoted husband. Not some lame ass who's pretty who runs around and wants to be applauded by every single ass he can see. And because of Abigail, Lalo made, a ha made an attempt. Because in comparison to me, Lalo was also ugly. <laughs> see what I mean? He was encouraged and inspired by Abigail. That could work. Because Lalo, he was devoted to me. What does it mean? It means that people got the feel. They understood what's relevant. What is relevant? Not the money in your bank account, per se. It's your emotion and your devotion to deliver yourself to another person who can then joyfully enjoy your love and reciprocate by feeling safe with you. That is the truth and the real birth of love on earth.
day with these dimples up on my face. I'm in a really good place, and nothing can make me feel down, down, down. Jump back if you're trying to come sideways. I don't need your bad vibes today, but if you wanna change your tone, you can play. But nothing can make me feel down, down, down. And not every day is like this, so I'ma talk about what I got.